Julie Burden here from Ramparts Gallery in the 78th Street Studios building. And I'd like to welcome you to our live preview of our show, our third annual ceramics exhibit and paintings by Lizzie Arnholt show. That's opening tomorrow, kicking it off with the third Friday art walk. But we've got our virtual preview tonight and we're so excited that you're joining us here. Now I've got three stellar ceramics artists that we're going to be talking to tonight and I'm so delighted that they're in the gallery with us tonight. And I'd like to introduce you to our first guest, um, personal favorite artist of mine, Michael High. Michael, how are you tonight? Hi Julie, I'm good. Hello everyone. So you've been busy in the studio making wonderful pieces of work and we're Fine. lucky enough to have you in the show tonight. So yes. thank you for being part of it. That's great. I so, always like supporting Rampart. So. Well, Michael, tell us, um, why don't you show us some of the pieces that you have um, presented to us so everybody can see okay. what's going on. Uh, these are my exclusives for Ramparts. Um, I made them with uh, the Ramparts customers that I've met here in the past at Third Fridays. Uh -huh. And um, a lot of the feedback I got was from younger people like uh, in the 19, 20 year olds who enjoy the work, but don't necessarily have the extra cash to be able to buy uh, my larger work. So I thought I would take the time and save up the materials to make a few pieces that were um, in a more uh, fiscally responsible level. Okay. Uh, these are at 60 and this one's at 160. And so, Michael, you've been um, you've been in this field for how many years? Dare I ask? Uh, <laughs> You're um, just so sophisticated. Technically, I've been a professional uh -huh. for five years. Okay. And um, I've studied ceramics for about ten. Okay. Um, I was in uh, bank marketing before this. So. Oh wow! What so this start, is like right? my yeah. Okay. So this is like my second career. Okay, so you work, and let's, I'd like us to go over and look at a couple other okay. pieces. We've got um, a piece over here, uh, Rick, if we go this way. Slow pan. Tell us about this piece. This is my, well, he's chimp, obviously, uh, but he sort of uh, cat encapsulates how I do my work, which uh, a lot of the uh, essence of my work is in the process. And um, they're sort of expressionistic in the way I handle the clay, um, where you can look at single aspects of things and it looks like just a lamination of thin layers of clay. But they're put all together and you pan back and it's uh, representational still. So it's not completely uh, esoteric. So Michael, I noticed that you you know you do animals so beautifully, you do humans so beautifully, but that to me the animals have human mm -hmm. human expression mm -hmm. somehow, and I don't know if, if that is intentional or that if that's just what, okay. totally intentional. Okay. Um, in fact, when people uh, look at like my cats or dogs, they're like, well, I know it's a dog but it looks like a person, or it reminds me of a person. And uh, that's sort of how I see it. I don't want to create art that's like specific to a breed or something like that. I, I want it to have a soul of its own. Okay. So that when the viewer sees it, they put a part of themselves into it, uh -huh. and it releases it from my care into their care. Okay. Well, thank you so much for, sure. do you want to show us a couple other pieces? Okay. And then we're going to, we've got, we've got lots of work in the show, as you can see. Yes, so that, from okay. everyone. Yeah. This is my skull for the Halloween set or. Uh, Perfect time of year for that. Roughly um, like the Grateful Dead. Yeah. <laughs> We do have a lot of piece. A lot of Michael's pieces are available tonight at RampartsClue.com. If you see something that you like, you can check out the website. And you might see some of the pieces. And this one is. This one is an award winner. 
It's a strength of purpose, and it's the essence of a warrior and a female empowerment. Absolutely stunning. So Michael, thank you for, for being here tonight. Thanks, Julie. And we are going to now. Bye, everyone. <laughs> we're now going to say hi to Andrea, Andrea LeBlanc, who has been hi. a friend of mine for many years. Yes, we even, yes, even have sure. the opportunity to work together. Yep, and yeah. um, one of my second favorite, uh, one of my top favorite artists. Yes. I was going to say the second, second favorite thing. artist yeah. of the evening. <laughs> and Andrea. Let's uh, take a look at what you've got here. Yeah, so I have um, a variety of functional work here at the gallery right now. Um, I make a combination of functional and sculptural work, but most of what I have here, I think, will, is mostly um, functional. Um, I love the fact that you can make something to use for your home. So no matter um, no matter what, I'll always make things that. I feel like are practical, things you can use to eat off of, drink out of, flower vases. I love, I can never make enough vases. It's like a continuous project of mine. And I know you so. love flowers too. I do love yeah. flowers, yes, yeah. yes. I'm kind of obsessed. I have a yeah. flower budget. <laughs> okay. I do. Um, and so Andrea, um, I, I will attest to it. I have one of your teapots and it pours perfectly and it's it's one of my favorite things to look oh, at in the morning when I make it tea. Hey, that's so good. Yeah. So this is a, a platter that yeah, everyone's so really I have, enjoying. Um, I'm working a little bit more sculpturally with this type of work. So adding strips of clay and then working, working them in so that it has a little bit more depth rather than a really flat surface. And then on top of that, I have an inlaid slip design so it's really subtle there's a little bit of a kind of a reverse design within so it gives a little more interest to the piece i think and i also really enjoy um, glazes that are somewhat transparent and maybe run a bit so it almost obscures the surface so you have to look a little bit deeper to see what's happening with the piece so it's it's a little bit quiet but hopefully there's some um, staying power with it that's my intention um, and then these longer, um, kind of a boat form, I've made a lot of these also, which is something that I, this form I really like quite a bit. Um, they look great with fruit or some other like small lemons or apples, some small items on your table. And very often people have long dinner tables. So I really like this long form. It looks great in the middle of a long table. It's kind of a nice centerpiece. So again, I like to think a lot about the home and how things look in a home and something that you can live with that is going to give a little bit of life to, to your everyday um, um, goings on. So yeah, things like that I really enjoy a lot. Um, I have a, one that's hanging behind you that I, I like as well. So that's a, that's a beautiful piece of wall. Um, to have something that also can work on the wall I think is a nice idea so if you don't have a lot of table space you can always put it up on the wall and for me that's a nice option and I think a lot of customers really like that too so you don't you're not stuck if you don't have a, a lot of table space you can just bring it out for occasional use but then put it back on the wall if you're not um, actively using it so it's like a piece of wall art instead definitely and so, Andrea, you uh, you are also you have a, a teaching career as well yes. going on at the same mm -hmm. time. So how how is that doing teaching and trying to yes. produce art? Yes, yeah, it's, it's quite a, a balance. challenge. Yeah. It's a little bit of a challenge, but I love it. And after the COVID um, lockdown and not being able to be um, in touch with my students, it was actually really hard. I actually really love the split time, half in the studio and half teaching. Teaching is so rewarding, I would never want to stop doing it. So it's great to have both. I'm really so happy that I'm back in the classroom, actually. It's yeah. been really nice. So. Good. And do you find that you get inspired by your students ever? Yes, or absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My students, I have incredible students with really creative, um, amazing outlooks with clay. And for me, I've been doing, I know you asked this earlier, but 
um, with Michael, I've been working in ceramics for like 20 plus years. So it's been a long time and it's really easy to get stuck in certain ways of working. But with students and being a beginner, it's really interesting to see how they come about it in very interesting ways that I would never think about. But it's really great for me because it kind of opens my mind to try to look at clay as a beginner would. And sometimes that really brings some new um, interest to the piece or it just keeps it from getting boring for me personally. Yeah. So. Well, Andrea, thank yeah. you so much for well, being you. here tonight. Absolutely. And your work is also available on our website. So great. we hope that you get some shoppers going. Great. Thank you. And so I have one final guest who is also joining us. And I'd like to introduce Sam Vaganski. And I have not known Sam very long. Um, delighted to meet Sam. And Sam, thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you so much for having me. This is a really lovely way to spend a nice evening, you know, talking about your work, of course. Yeah. So we've got we've got lots of your work here. Um, let's um, let's start out by why don't you show us some of your favorite pieces? Yeah. So I would imagine personal favorites. They're kind of like children. You probably shouldn't have them, but you always do. Uh -huh. <laughs> so these like four right here, um, navigating into the jar right over that way, are kind of some of my favorites of this series. I feel like the the reason is mostly just because of the stark um, patterning and the sgraffito that I'm doing on the surface. Um, so they're just, I feel like these are just the successes. These are some of the later ones in the series. Uh -huh. um, kind of when like I am more like uh, calculating the process rather than just experimenting. So your work has such beautiful, kind of subtle, just soothing colors. I don't know, just personally, I love, yeah. I love the pinks and the, you know, um, I love the, what did you call that, scrito? Yeah, scrofito. Scr so it's, the, it's okay. the process of um, carving into clay. I do it dry, some people do it on like a leather hard clay. Okay. So you're, I'm removing the underglaze on the outside to reveal the white porcelain underneath. Okay. Yeah. And you've been, how long have you been making making pottery? Oh God, um, <laughs> not a very long time. I mean, I started um, in my sophomore year at Otterbein, um, and it really just kind of came out of um, boredom. I was taking a sculpture class at the time, but um, and then I just started throwing on the wheel. So I think it's been about five years. Okay. Um, of just kind of consistently making and creating. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you have you have a sculpture um, also. Yes. Tell us about this sculpture. Yeah. This is pretty cool here. What is, tell us about this. Yeah, so this is a piece. Uh, <laughs> it's incredibly personal. Okay. I don't want to get too close to it. Yeah, of you course. Know, but uh, it, it was born out of a time in my life where I really didn't know what to do. Um, I think this sculpture really is, for me, um, kind of like a... Um, a checkpoint for personal healing. Um, it's something that I definitely, um, I wish I could just spend time with it for a lot longer. I hope someone buys it, of course. Um, but I think it's just something um, that really comes out of and really just is a testament to my process, which is I make things fundamentally about um, kind of like bullet points in a journal. So this is like kind of like the ending of a chapter, right? Okay. So these yeah. things are... Um, I oftentimes am like feeling things, going through things in life where I'm navigating them, but I want to do that in a cathartic process. So that's where clay comes in, right? So I'm taking um, clay and glaze and form and function and um, processing those things into 3D space so I don't have to carry certain amounts of that weight. So um, the larger it is, I guess the more weight take it off, right? But these things are really just all about... Um, they're honestly journal entries. Um, I don't want to get too deep into that, no, but they really are just that. They're a part of me for sure. Is it you? You find it's kind of cathartic uh, to do um, to express yourself through through the clay medium. Totally, I think clay it, yeah. is like in its own right super earthy, and like yeah. you, I mean, you're connected with fundamentally like the earth. You are connected and ma manipulating, and maneuvering this um, incredibly oftentimes plastic and malleable thing. Um, so obviously the possibilities are endless, which this show very much so demonstrates. Um, so yeah. Well, good. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being here and showing us your phenomenal work tonight. Yeah, thank Appreciate you so much for it. having me. And so we actually, we will be having our third Friday artwork preview. There are tickets still available. You can get them, um, check out our Facebook, um, 
chat. Natalie's going to be posting the link to that. And we will be having open Saturday hours this coming weekend from noon to four. So you can stop by the gallery. It'll be, um, you know, if you want a, a quieter experience, you can also book a private appointment with a small group if you'd like. Uh, feel free to do that. And Rick, if you want to just kind of scan the walls a little bit, just to give a sneak peek of some of the other, other works that we have. We've got painter Lizzie Arnhall. We've got um, 12 other ceramic artists that we're featuring. And so we hope you please take some time and stop by the gallery. These works will be on view um, this month. And, you know, as, as long as they don't sell, they'll be here through the holiday season. So come and check us out. Thanks for joining tonight. Have a great evening.